Sorry, I'm like surrounded by yarn right now because I just filmed a um, like wrap up of my knitting year for my knitting channel slash like podcast, The Subversive Stitch. And then I got distracted and started doing some knitting. Okay, I'm gonna finish this and then I'm gonna begin properly. <laughs> um, but yeah, my name is Anna Marie. Welcome to Actual Spinster. Today I'm gonna do my December wrap up. Shit, should I have increased? This is why you don't do that. <laughs> I'm gonna sort that out later. <laughs> I read four books <laughs> in December and yeah, I just thought I would like wrap up them up because I don't want them to be forgotten, um, even if like, yeah, it's not loads of them, um, like in the in the kind of new year time. Why do I never remember if it's Tamsin or Tasmin? The first book I finished in December was Tamsin Muir's book Harry the Ninth which is the second in the Locked Tomb series and I also read the first one this year too um but Harry the Ninth took me like quite a few months I'm not sure quite when I started actually I guess maybe not that many maybe just like two or three three months I think I started in October so I can't kind of like give you like plot stuff um but I would say that I definitely felt like the beginning of this really didn't work very well uh but by the end of it I liked it better than Gideon the Ninth um I just felt like the way that it began was actually very confusing and not like in a particularly great entertaining way more just in like a this isn't actually a very good structure structured book um way but I do think it got way better I think the writing is better I think you know I, I think there's still some like of the, these like quirks of the writing where like you know it's very like online there's lots of kind of sly slightly kind of like I don't know sometimes they feel vaguely like cynical or, like, or that's not quite the right word but like pats on the back about being like in the in crowd of the internet and like knowing all this like funny joke meme slang stuff which like is fine I do think that these books are funny but not because of those parts you know like those are the least funny parts really <laughs> but yeah I really loved the development of the character Harrow I found her very relatable actually but um in a, in a vaguely distressing kind of way but that's fine um but yeah like I said I just liked it a lot I, I liked the sci-fi stuff I really liked some of the stuff around like god I don't think that's a spoiler to say <laughs> I loved another character um who's just kind of kind of sexy but awful but like hot you know because I love women yeah I would say that like with this I mean I'm gonna keep reading the series but I would say that the series like it's just not as good as like as all the hype I guess is what I feel in my experience so I do feel like sometimes I come away just feeling a bit like okay <laughs> I, I do still feel like I had the same issues I had with the first book which is just that like there is just so much like it's so eating disordery it's not great I'm not necessarily saying that people shouldn't like represent eating disorder stuff but I do also think you have to be responsible and I also think that like like Haru has like eating disorder stuff but then outside of that is a lot of like really shit stuff too still um in terms of like describing very thin bodies and like yeah I also I think it's like boring and yeah I don't know I do also just feel like Harrow should have been older like it just didn't make any sense for her to be like 17 or something ludicrous which is the same with Gideon and I I felt like you know she should they, they both should just be in their 20s like I, it wouldn't change anything like they're just not 17 and 18 year olds like it's so clear but you know there we go I did enjoy it and like I said I liked it better than Gideon the Ninth I have heard that Nonna is like all right I think like the person I know who's read all three of them was saying that like it's her least favorite so I'm not like super excited to read Nonna but I am I mean I'm still gonna keep reading the series so but I think yeah I was gonna like read it this year as well or like try to start reading it this year but I decided that instead I would wait till next year because then the last one comes out next year so that way I can kind of read those two next year closer together yeah okay so then I finished another book that I had been reading for a while but this one much longer I think I started this in what like August something ridiculous like that maybe September but you know a while um and yeah this is The Idiot by Elif Batiman this is just like about a girl on uh who's in the 1990s she's like Turkish American she goes to Harvard and it's just like she's just like desperate for some kind of like truth in the world and love in the world and she's struggling but it's not necessarily like a struggle book it's just she's learning so much and she's trying to make sense of things and you know she has these ideas about the world and some of them are true and some of them aren't and she doesn't understand why 
like people behave the way they do I guess and there's some stuff about like technology and emails which I loved which is why I gave a best book about emails in my <laughs> best books of the year video I think like you know one day I'm gonna make a video about all my favorite like email books because I really do love emails in books which I know a lot of people find boring but I don't I love it I mean they have to be done like well yeah and it's also I guess specifically focused on well I guess there's like two strands of this that I really enjoyed one of them is it's very much about language and specifically kind of about like Eastern European languages, uh, Turkish, the relationship of Europe, but especially like Hungary and 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 Eastern Europe with Turkey. And then also like historically and then also, I guess, in the present day in how Turkish and Hungarian culture and language are like interconnected because of their history together. It's vaguely about Russian, it's also just about like the process of learning a language, learning new languages, trying to be understood, which of course is something that people try to, it's like much more well articulated when you're learning a new language. I would say it's done through like a particularly like emotional lens, like in a really nice way, I like that a lot. And in quite like a sort of like sensitive teenage girl kind of way too, which again, I liked quite a lot. And then there's also this kind of strand of it, which is this sort of like somewhat like romance, not really a romance romance, but just like she, the main character who's called, wow, I've forgotten, Selen, she has a crush on this guy. <laughs> Um, and Ivan is like a dig. Um, I really didn't like him, but I also thought it was like, again, like vaguely devastatingly um, accurate to some of my experiences in my life and like my relationships with people. And there is a way that like they communicate, they like miscommunicate, like when somebody communicates with you in, in a very specific way that they don't with anybody else and you feel deeply flattered by that. But it's also, it's not necessarily a sign that they love you or that they even like care or understand you more than other people. And coming to that realization is like a very crushing <laughs> thing, you know? And you're just like, the conversations and the things we share together mean so much to me, but they clearly just don't mean that much to you. And that, yeah, that can be painful. Or even if they say that it means so much, they don't behave in a way that really suggests that. It's not like um, an incredible book, but I did really enjoy it and I would really recommend it. And especially I think if you're interested in language, um, if you like campus novels, and also if you, you are interested in like I really loved what this was when this was talking about like Europe in a kind of like questioning sense in like a deconstructing sense yeah I just really enjoyed that and that was kind of also one of the threads of my own reading like the whole past year one of the things that like I guess is really at the forefront of my mind in terms of like Yiddish stuff too and as a result like I just really appreciated reading this and there's even some stuff like this was published in like 2018 or something 2017 and there was some stuff about like Ukraine in here uh which I thought was like very sort of prescient to read after the past year yeah so one of the reasons why it took me so long to read isn't because it was bad it's just because like i wasn't really in the headspace to read like stuff like this slash just like stuff because this is not unintellectual i wouldn't say it's like massively like dense or heavy but it's just how like you know when people talk about like intellectual stuff as a way to talk about how they're doing that is what's going on in this novel and that i really liked you know it's like a way just like another way to communicate about yourself but in a way that isn't saying today I did this it's more like oh did you think about you know the way that you identify with paintings or how you see colour or how you say particular words or, or imagine language I think I will read either or uh, but not for a little while. Sorry, I feel like I talked about that for ages, but I haven't talked about these books, I guess, yet, so I should, even if they've shown up a bit in my, like, kind of wrap up -y type content. The next book I read was actually just a reread, and that's Murder Most Unladylike. I kind of just, like, needed, like, something nice, or, like, something that I'd already read, you know? I, I was ill, basically, from the mid- December all the way through. I had this deadline and I have a deadline again. Like, you know, it was just like very stressful and not a great time for me really. So yeah, I just was like, it's time to listen. And I wanted something like comforting and that I read before. But yeah, so Murder Most Unladylike is the beginning of the, uh, it's just called Murder Most Unladylike. That's the whole series name. Blech. So yeah, it's the beginning of that series. It's this like kids books murder mystery series where the two main protagonists are like Hazel and Daisy and Daisy is this perfect child it's set in the 1930s and Hazel is the one who's like writing it down and it's kind of like Watson and Holmes and 
they like subconsciously kind of know that but it's also like not that at all you know like hazel's great and yeah she's also from hong kong and so there's some commentary about her experience um of like othering and racism but yeah it's at like boarding school too so it's, it's quite a lot of fun after i finished the idiot i kind of did like give up on my reading i was like okay i've read 75 books i'm clearly not going to read anymore but then i did finish murder most unladylike and then also i ended up picking this up which is marzan monomore by Katja Oskamp, uh, translated by Joe Heinrich from the German, I believe, which is something I wanted to read, but I had planned to read it as like a special treat to myself over Hanukkah, and I just, I, it just didn't work, I couldn't do it. So I gave up, but then basically I read it in one day, because I read it on my train journey. <laughs> and it was really nice, I mean it's pretty short, well I say it was really nice, it was nice that I finished it, I'm glad I read it, uh, but it, it wasn't, it was a bit disappointing and it wasn't really what I thought it was, which I think is mo is somewhat on me like i definitely feel like i made a lot of assumptions but i also think that maybe like the blurb kind of suggests it's more going to be about about it than it is but yeah so this is about marzan which is a particular housing estate um in berlin uh and it was originally built uh by the german democratic republic and it's like apparently notorious and stuff basically this is like um I mean, it's kind of a memoir. It is non-fiction and it's sort of these like vignettes of different people, um, sorry, <laughs> where the author, she retrained or like trained as a chiropodist. Yeah, so it's, it's about that. It's basically about like her patients and also the people that she works with and I don't know, a couple other people too. And yeah, it's just like, it's okay, you know, it, it didn't give me much. I guess it was interesting in how like, it is the work that she does is obviously a form of like very sort of personal, like care work, looking after people's feet, including like, you know, elderly people's feet, disabled people's feet, but it didn't, it just didn't give me much. I think some people might like this. And I think I was also thinking that maybe if you're like really interested in like massage and stuff like that, this might be an interesting book to read because it's sort of like, in a way you could read it as like case studies. I mean, it's not written like that, but you know yeah I don't I, I guess for me I, I did just think there was going to be more in the history and like I would hear more about East Berlin and like people's experience of that but there was only like a little bit of that and in fact I, there was only like one guy who was obviously like horrible <laughs> and had had been like a party official during the German Democratic Republic and then there was also this other woman and obviously all, most of the people because most of the people that she was interacting with and caring for like they were elderly people so they had all lived through it and like remembered it but yeah it just wasn't really like as present as I thought it would be so it was a bit disappointing but you know that's obviously because I was like oh I'm really interested in reading about East, East Germany so uh, yeah <laughs> but I also think it has a really lovely cover I really like the colour of it all bit of a disappointing way to end 2022 but like not that bad because I, I was sort of done with reading and then I was like oh apparently I'm not wait these are kind of like the same colour aren't they and then like this is also kind of the same colour too ish right yeah let me know if you've read any of these books I hope you had a good December reading and you have good reading months into the future and yeah let me know your thoughts about any of these books and I will talk to you when I next talk to you bye